Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper, and today I'm going to do how to make um, a very simple box. Um, this is a thinner make. Some boxes can be taller, wider, you know, big boxes, small boxes. This is an actually a, a very narrow box, this particular pattern that I've had to make. Um, it's it's uh, very similar to like a Whitworth cartridge box, um, you know, something, you know, it, Revolutionary War era, a little beyond, um, where you would store your very long um, uh, papers of gunpowder with your bullet in them, um, or even your long cartridge shells. But so it's a little reminiscent of that shape. Um, but it's it's one of those pieces that you can make using only a handful of tools, all of which were available in the 1700s, obviously through today. And um, first and foremost, what we have to do when we do a pattern like this is to uh, create your dimensions. So this is a three by five inch box. Um, and here's the bottom pattern. Here's the top pattern. Now, I've pasted these onto scrap tin, any kind of sheet metal, sheet steel that you have, um, just some paper, it doesn't even have to be um, graph paper, it can be regular paper that you've done the math on, um, to your exact dimensions, and then you just glue it onto your, um, your, your steel or your tin and cut it out so that you have a ongoing pattern. Um, it's just gonna make it a lot easier paper is not your friend when it comes to tracing out on sheet metal for this. So um, what I, uh, the biggest part of this is getting your corners right. And as you can see, I'm going to come up close. So this is the base. Right here, you can see where all the folds are gonna be. Once I cut this out, um, that's my, you know, it's like three quarters of an inch um, sides. But if you see how I've notched the corners here, now the long side only has enough, this is about an eighth of an inch and that's going to be folded just so that we have nice smooth sides to the, the face of um, the box top. Then you have over here again an eighth of an inch that's gonna be folded over, but then you have your actual wings that are gonna create a lap seam once we fold this up and that's where we can solder and make these watertight. Um, so it looks a little weird, but that's, that's kind of your best bet. Um, over here, this is the cover. As you can see, we're looking now at like mm, an eighth as opposed to, a, I'm, if I said an eighth, I meant a quarter, quarter of an inch. This is an eighth. Wow. See, I still can't do math. It's been over five years. Whatever it is, this is going to depend completely. The bigger the piece, um, the bigger your um, your top is gonna be, sometimes you might even be wiring the top, but for this case, we're gonna be folding. Um, and you're gonna have to allot for that fold and then for um, the, the little wings that you're gonna bend again in. So without further ado, we're gonna go over to the bar folder where I am going to, uh, uh, actually, no, we're not, I lied. <laughs> totally don't edit these, I just do, like if you were in the shop with me. Um, we're gonna trace these out first with a scribe and cut them out and I'm just gonna show you a close up of the notching and then we're gonna move to the bar folder. So here we go, how to build a box. Now, what I do try to do to eliminate waste is scooch the one short side face and one long face right against the very edge because everything up here I can use um, for like a rim band or something like that. So it's not unusable scrap. So you really wanna minimize your scrap to as small of an area as possible. And it saves you from, you know, having to draw two long lines. Um, and then you wanna go as tight as you can to your metal. Um, the long lines of the box top and bottom. Right now we're just gonna focus on the bottom and we'll do the top um, in a different video. But um, the this is great if you don't have a stomp shears, 
you can just use a snips. The bigger the snips, the better, just in terms of the longer the cuts, the smoother your edges will be, um, just in terms of look and ease and buckling. Um, so first I'll cut off my excess um, as close as I can to my line. save the material if I can. Um, but you're only able to do a handful of cuts on this simply because um, you know, you can't do those silly little corners um, even if you wanted to. So I'm kind of eyeballing this because it's um, by my lines. There we go. And this little guy. What you want to do is um, take off the most that you can um, with this sound shears um, to save yourself the grief of working with more material when you're using a snips to get the corners. The less material you have to maneuver, the happier you will be. Okay, so we now have our blanks. We have to cut out the corners, and then, then we can move to the bar folder for the base. Okay, smaller snips is better than a bigger snips for this. If you have something even smaller than this, I do, but they're um, crusty and I need to fix them up. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut as few cuts as you can. So um, you're trying to go directly to your lines. So it's just, you're not like chop chopping. You're gonna wanna get it lined up and just do one straight cut. And then you're gonna go into all the little corners. And again, one, and you're gonna oh, get some buckling um, in the little tiny corners and that's okay. I'll fix that later. cut on the back side. I don't know if you can see it, but you're gonna have like these little kind of puckers. And that's gonna give you kind of a headache when you start to fold this up. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take a rawhide hammer, you're gonna set it on any flat surface if you have, you know, a, a coppersmith stake or you have some other flat surface, and you're just gonna lightly flatten out those. I know it sounds fussy to just like do those little bitty like things like hammering up the corners and things like that. But if I've learned anything from Bob and just from doing this is it sometimes those little tiny, like it feels like superfluous steps that make your life a heck of a lot easier. It's the same as like trying to have a very smooth circle before you go on the burring machine so that it doesn't jump on you. Those are the same kinds of like little details. Anyway, so now what we're going to do is we are going to, um, fold this, I'm trying to see what, I like to do the yucky side to the inside. It's all gonna get clean. But I wanna make sure that we are folded correct, and we are. So you're gonna do something a little weird when you do something like this. You're, you're, you're gonna actually like fold it and then unfold it for the first two long sides. Oh wait, I lied. You're gonna do that, but you're also gonna fold your, you're gonna fold your um, corners first. Now, when you're making a box, see, that's why I don't edit these, I just do. Um, when you're making a box, 
you um, wanna, in this case, fold your folds, your, your, seat, your um, top folds to the inside so that your cover doesn't, what is going on? So that your cover doesn't um, get stuck. And you're gonna go all the way around on this. So you're gonna make it nice and tight. So what I'm doing is I'm bending to the inside. I'm a little overzealous on that one. All right. So as you can see, now all of my um, my edges are no longer sharp. So that means that no one's gonna cut themselves when they reach into this box. But now, now we can start folding up the corners themselves and that is gonna do the rest of the job of flattening down some of these long faces. Um, you don't want them super, super tight if you can help it because you're gonna end up tucking this flange inside. But we're gonna do this close up and you can see what I mean. All right. So first and foremost, I'm going to do the short side. You're going to slide it all the way in, but not so far that you're going to catch your corners. And you're only going to go enough to bend it. Obviously, you can go as close to um, 90 degrees as you want, but it's not going to matter in this case because, and bear with me while I flatten that. There you go. As you can see, I needed that a little flatter. Okay. All right, now you've got that side. Great, that's wonderful. That's not gonna help you get this in now because you have your corners and everything in the middle. So now what you're gonna do, goes against all thinking. You're going to flatten this out. Now you can do this either with your hands or on a flat surface if you wish, like that. You're gonna even do it even more. You've already made the bend, so that's kind of already been put inside of the memory of the crystal structure of your copper. So don't worry about that not being there. That's done. You've, you've baptized it. Um, but now, what you're going to do, and of course, there we go, you're going to scooch all the way to the edge of, you know, your your cornered notch or your piece there. So kind of line that up, eyeball it, okay? So you can see, and now I'm gonna draw that up as much, as perfect as I can. And if you have something that lets you do your, do 90 degrees if you uh, have that option, a, stop, a back stop for it. Um, and what that did is, as you can see, it moved my seams to a 90 degree angle as well without me having to use a hand tool. I will show you on the lid how to use hand tools for this. If you do not have a bar folder, you can do this with the pliers. All right, now we have mostly a box. So bravo, you have now created a um, mostly a box. You can do the, the next step a couple of different ways. First and foremost, you can attempt to do it by hand and work your way up. I don't recommend that. Second option is with a hand tool. And you can use any type of um, pliers you have. Um, in this case, this one is too wide. Why did I grab this one? If you have a not as wide one, you can do that. I will find that for the next one. But uh, my favorite way is over a stake or over something that is perfectly square. In this case, you can either use 
Um, if you have any type of like a, a tinsmith or coppersmith steak or any type of square steak like that, um, the best one to use is a square bottoming steak. And that's what we're gonna use right now. Again, because you're using copper, ideally, you're using a rawhide hammer instead of a metal to do this. You don't need a hard hammer, um, copper soft enough that it moves that easily. Um, so we're gonna use this bottoming steak to finish drawing up the corners. Okay, obviously this is a little bit bigger than my bottoming steak, my square bottoming steak, which is fine. If all that matters is, is that when I'm hammering that I have the two faces, the long face and, this, and the short face, the corner of that, against the metal on both surfaces. So I don't wanna be hammering over here right now because it's not touching the metal. I wanna be hammering on this side. And all I'm gonna gently do is line it up and start to gently bring that down with the rawhide watching my little flanges to make sure that they end up on the inside of the copper box then on the outside. Beautiful. So you see how they kind of scooched in? Now I'm just gonna kind of go on the corners. I'm gonna really move them in. And then over here, the same thing. Back and forth, back and forth. Same over here. There you go. And then all that remains is to solder the insides. See the little flanges in the corners? You can either, um, you can either like clip those and so that they kind of like tuck underneath that interior fold or you can just leave them straight sided. Um, it doesn't really matter either way. And then, um, then you're ready to solder it and you have a watertight box. Um, I'll do that the next time when I'm doing the lid. I'll show you um, the soldering process and we'll see the final box put together at that stage. And um, I'll show you the lid process since you flip things opposite in order to make it kind of fit nicely. Um, but anyway, that is your box. It's cute. Okay, thank you again for joining me here in the Copper Shop. My name is Sarah, this is House Copper. If you liked what you've seen, you wanted to see way more about the shop or about cooking in copper, please subscribe to the channel and tell your friends and family. You can find me at House Copper on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at House Copper and Cookware. You can pick up my book, Copper, Iron and Clay, anywhere books are sold. Um, and I am always excited and willing to get um, comments, feedback, ideas from other Smiths or the people who have questions. Please don't hesitate. I'm sometimes slow in getting back to the comments because I have three kids home for the summer and it's nuts, but I will respond at some point. And um, that's it. I will see you for the second half of this. And in the meantime, thank you for watching and see you next time.